So today's lecture we're going to be talking about files and streams. So to start with, I'm going to start with a lecture here in the book, um, this file test form application, figure 1713. And so uh, before we go into the actual application, one thing I want to point out here at the top is this using statement. So if you're going to be doing anything with files or directories, reading and writing, you're going to have to include this using namespace system.io because that's the namespace where all these classes we're going to be dealing with today exist. So there are a tremendous amount of classes that .NET gives you to in order to interact with files and files of different types. So in today's lecture we're going to be talking mainly just about uh, text files which are the most common but there are classes that you would specifically use for binary files, XML files, etc. etc. Again today we're just going to be doing with text files. So for example there is the stream reader class and so this is you can see it implements a text reader that reads characters from a file. So if you want to read a file use the stream reader class. If you want to write to a file you'd use the stream writer class. So kind of just some easy classes to, to work through in order to give us that information that we need. So now let's go back to this application here and it's a really simple application in that you just enter in your file path. Now in this application you can enter in the file or the directory. When you press enter it's going to spit out some information here about this given file. So if I were to run this and I've just created a little test file to begin with. So if I press enter you can see that it just kind of lists out all this information about the file. And here's just this below here is some stuff that I've typed into the file. And it's just our lecture notes and then just you know some sentences that I wrote. Also it's going to tell us that hey this file does exist. It was created on this date. Here's when it was last modified, last accessed. Then it prints out everything that's in the file. So now if we go into the file come down here to this input text key down. So what they're doing is is they're just saying hey when the user presses enter that's when we want to do something. So but they're handling all key inputs. So if we say does the key code enter keys.enter. So if you don't press enter it won't do anything else. Just get the name that the user entered. And so here's our first thing that we're using for the file class. So this file class is a static class that you'll see that has all kinds of methods that are going to deal with files. So we can append text to files, we can copy a file, so you can see you have the source name and the destination file. We can create a file, create text, you can decrypt and encrypt. Now these two f methods, they implement a very simple form of encryption. You would never use these particular methods in any real application where you needed real encryption. Again, if you just wanted someone not to really read it, that's one thing. If you needed really to protect your data, you, there's other actual encryption classes that .NET has created for us. Um, you can delete files. You can see if two files equal. You, you know, here's a, a key one exists that we're going to be using. Here's how they got all the attributes and different uh, attributes associated with a given file. We can move it. We can open it. And so I think you kind of get the idea that there's all these different methods that are all encapsulated into this file class. So when you're dealing with files, it, it's really kind of, it's not too difficult just to remember the file class. And we'll be talking about it in just a second. There's also a directory class. So here we're going to say, does the file exist? Because if it doesn't exist, well, we don't want to do anything. And then we call this method called get information. So I'll just put a breakpoint here so it's easier for us to come back to this. Click go to definition. And now this method, again, it's kind of nice the way they've broken this out because this is kind of one of those uh, techniques that we want to do where we have a method that sort of just does one thing and this information hey print out all the information associated with this file so we're just clearing our text book box and then we're just going to say hey this file does actually exist now we're going to use that file class that we just talked about to get the creation date time the last write and the last access time and we all we just saw that when I ran the application how it printed out all that data come back up here now you'll notice that they're actually put a try catch block here so that they want to handle any exceptions that are getting thrown by this tr this using statement in here. So why did we use a using statement when we instantiated this new stream reader? So remember stream reader is in order to read this stream, the stream of bytes coming in from this file that we want to open. And so in the stream reader there's different ways we can do this but one of the easier ways is just to pass in to the constructor the, the name of the file we want to read from. And remember the var keyword, so if we highlight this you can see it is type stream reader. And why did we put this inside of the using statement? 
Well, what that does is that anywhere in between these two brackets, if an exception is thrown, so on this line, if we throw an exception, we're trying to read to this file, then it will automatically call the dispose method and close that file for us. And how does it do that? Well, if I right click on here, click go to definition of the stream reader, and I scroll to the top, you can see that it also implements text reader. So if I go to definition there, we'll see there's that iDisposable interface. So because it implements iDisposable, that's why we can have this using keyword, because it will automatically call iDisposable for us, rather than us have to say stream.dispose. Now you'll notice here that they're only catching one particular type of exception. So if I were to highlight stream reader, you can see that it actually lists out the exceptions that this particular class throws. There's argument exception, file not found exception, in this case, they only wanted to handle the one type of exception. So if it's any of those other type of exceptions, it actually won't be handled in this particular case. Now, if the file doesn't exist, then we next check to see if it's a directory. And so we're going to now use the directory class. So we can see it's kind of the same thing. If we want to create a directory, we've got methods, delete directories. We can enumerate through directories, see if it exists. Again, get attributes associated with that directory, move the directory, etc., etc. Very handy class. And so now we're going to say, okay, is this a directory? If it wasn't, we just tell them, you know, it doesn't even exist. But if it does, you'll notice we pass in that same thing where we get information about the directory. And then we're just going to do this where we get the directories. You notice this returns a string array. And so that gets us this directory listing. Then we just loop through the directory listing and it prints all the directories out. So if I were to come back here and rather than pressing enter in order to get all the information associated with a file, if I were just to back it up, there you can see it actually gives me the information associated with the directory. So a very basic sense of how we actually just read and write to a text file. So now I want to move on to one of our in-class examples. And you'll notice that in this program, we're going to be reading from this file in two different ways. We can have this button here where it'll read all the data from this file. Or another way, we can actually click this button to open and then read this one line at a time. This over here is going to allow us to create a file with whatever text we enter into this text box. And here, this will allow us to append text to whatever file we have. So if I were to run this application, if we do read all data from file, it's actually just that same file that we were looking at before. Here, if we uh, come in here, let me delete this. Now open the file for reading, and now I can just read one line at a time. So if you needed to parse a file, and you just wanted it one line at a time to read a line and then do something, maybe this is a comma delimited file, so each row represents you know, some sort of object, like an employee object or something like that, so it has all the employee's information. You could read one line at a time. And you'll notice that I actually know when it's the end of the file, and I actually close the file when I get there. Down here, this is going to create the file with this below contents, and then I can then append text to that file. So let's take a look at this program. Again, have to include this system.io example. Now I'm going to create a class level variable of type stream reader. That's going to be associated with this open file for reading because I need to open it and then I need another method that I'm clicking through. So I need to keep that stream reader open each time. So let's take a look at the reading all data. So we just get the information from the user, make sure that file exists. If it doesn't, we just tell the user it doesn't exist. Now Always make sure to use that using statement for any object that implements the iDisposable interface. So we create our stream reader. So now we've got our stream reader that we can use to read the data. And so again, we can open up these methods. And there, there's various, you know, there's the close, there's the dispose method that the using statement takes care of for us. So when we get here, we know that this dispose was going to get called automatically, whether or not an exception gets thrown. If it hits this bracket, dispose gets called. And that's just kind of nice because that way we're guaranteed that we're not going to accidentally leave this file open. And so you can see there's peak, there's read, read line, read to end. And so that's the method we're going to use here in order to just read all of the data from the file. Now, of course, you have to know, you know what kind of file you're reading from if you're going to use a method like read to end. Because you wouldn't want to read a very large file. You'd want to read line by line if it, if it was megabytes, you know, for example. Here, we're just going to take all the data, print it out to the text box. And this is just a reminder that we don't have to call um, file read.close because we implemented this using statement here. 
So this next idea is where we're going to open the file for reading and then just read one line at a time. So same thing, always make sure the file exists. We're going to create my stream here and I'm going to show you a different way to do it. So on, up to this point we've used the stream reader class like this. Well now what we're going to do is I'm going to use the file.openText and you can see file.openText returns a stream reader to me. So it's just another way to get the same handle to a file. That's all that is. And so now I've created this stream. And you'll notice I don't do anything with the stream yet. Not until this next method here where I'm going to read each line. And so I just read a line of text. I make sure it's not null. And then I say, if it is null, we just tell, give the user a message that we're closing the file. Close the file, just kind of update the UI. If it wasn't null, then we just print a new line character and then we print that line of text. Pretty straightforward. Down here, where we're talking now about creating the file with whatever text we entered here. So we're going to get our file name now here. Now I use this character here because I actually want to use this backspace and not treat it as an escape character. So that's what that at symbol does for me. It says treat this string literally. And so I'm going to create the path. Now you'll notice I'm hard coding this C colon backslash. And that was the same up here just because I defaulted this. Now when I ran Visual Studio, I actually ran it as administrator because I knew I just wanted to keep this path simple going to the C where that's generally right protected unless you run it as administrator. So this might give you an exception if you ran this application without running Visual Studio as administrator. But there's other place, places like uh, C users um, and there's like a public kind of a thing where, there's, where you can put read and write files and, or, like, or your desktop, things like that. But again, I just tried to keep it simple. Now we just make sure the file exists. If it does, I'll create my stream writer now. And then I'm going to put my writer.write. And then this will actually close because it's closed via the disposed method that I'm using because I have this stream writer that implements iDisposable. Now if I want to append data to the file, I just input the data that the user, or I grab the data that the user inputted, make sure the file exists create that stream writer now you'll notice what I do is I say file dot append text so this is opening up that file but it's sort of putting that pointer at the end of the file now so that as I write data to it it's going to write it at the end of the file and so this just writes a new line character then this just writes the actual data to the file so now again there's a lot of different um, classes that .NET gives us to read and write files, but I thought just by opening and closing some text files that would kind of get you the gist and you could then figure out the rest from there if that you had specific file types like binary or XML. Thank you.